evening, folks. We have a wonderful evening's entertainment lined up for you. One that will provide several hours of pleasurable relaxation and diversion for you and your family. We hope you'll make this a weekly visit. Bring the family. Bring your friends. We hope you have a wonderful time. Come back soon. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Knights of the Pageless Library. We are a little podcast dedicated to reviewing audiobooks. I am Bo Knight, and joined, as always, by my brother, Ryan Knight. And today, we are taking a look at Old Wounds, written by Tom Batt and narrated by Keir Hansen. Yeah, and this one's kind of special because I put the call out on Reddit to look for some guests for the show, see if anybody wanted to come on, talk with us. And Tom was actually one of the people who reached out to me saying he would like to discuss this book that he had written as well as come on the show. So he gave us this book for free, so we'll just preface it with that. But yeah, we're going to review this and then I'll hopefully be reaching out to Tom as well and we'll have him on the show to talk about it, which will be really cool. Mm -hmm. So thanks, Tom. If you're hearing this, thanks for the opportunity to do this. That's Yeah, we really appreciate cool. that. It's yeah. very cool. So awesome. Yeah, so let's see. And if anybody has anything to say about that, if you want to talk about this book with us or any book with us, uh, the easiest way to do that is to email us, kotpl.pod at gmail.com. Still the easiest way to get a hold of us. And the only thing I would ask still you know to this day is if you like what we do you know give us a thumbs up five stars whatever it may be you know helps us out and we really appreciate it Mm -hmm. with that i think we'll just jump right into this one huh so this book's pretty new just came out was it last year 2021 i i think so i maybe the book came out 2021 and the audiobook came out 2022 that could be yeah that's what it looks like either way it's pretty new so i think this was also you know kind of an opportunity for tom i mean he probably doesn't know we're not very popular but uh (laughs) it's a little i mean we'll definitely it gives this book a little bit of a shout out too so i think that works out good for him as well and you see who published this by chance or was it published by him it might have been self-published i'm not sure i feel like it was because i think when I last listened to it, I do think he did self-publish it, which is also pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Something that if he comes on the show, I would definitely like to discuss. Yeah, it's so like what now goes what goes into that. Sure. Uh, we, I also should mention we did listen to this through Audible, so Tom provided us with an Audible code to download the book directly, which again, super. Cool. Mm-hmm. We should all. Also mention too, real quick, that in the title of this, so it's called Old Wounds, A Nick Shelby Case and Other Crime Stories is the full title of this book. And we're going to talk about that once we start talking about the book, because I kind of have a problem with it. <laughs> okay. But we'll, we'll get into that here in a little bit. I mean, I'll, I don't know who Nick Shelby is. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. So I, I want to get into something here. What did you think about our narrator here, Mr. Keir Hansen? I thought Keir... <clears throat> okay. So I had a few issues with this. I think that Keir does a good job. He does good voices. He's a good narrator. However, there were parts of this book where, because this is a bunch of short stories, and... The intro to the next story is just a, you know, maybe it's called, like, The Suitcase or The Room or something like that. The way this guy was talking, it's almost like a run-on sentence. And sometimes I didn't even realize we switched stories because he finishes one thought, there's no pause, and because the stories weren't numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or whatever, or chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... It would literally just be like, and then he found her dead on the floor, the room, and and so and so woke up, and I was like, wait a second, this this is a new story? Like, hang on a second, and it was, it it blended together almost 
in a not good way for me. I I agree with you. I I think. Uh, yeah, I think he did, a, he did a he did a fine job. I, I noticed a couple like audio mistakes too, where he like retook takes. Yep. But yep, they did they left too. in like him being like ah oh, shit and starting over. <clears throat> yep, I noticed that as well. Which which is really weird t- to me. But I I agree with you. I feel like there needed to be better like bumpers between the stories, because it because it was hard for me to keep following sometimes. And I feel like a lot of these stories are so short that you don't get familiar that familiar with the characters yep. and then like another story would start immediately and it would be like okay what's going on like who is this yeah and another thing that goes along with that same deal is the very just the way he was reading it so a character might be having like a flashback or something or oh, thinking yeah. about something in the past and then it immediately rolls into what's going on presently mm-hmm. but there's no distinction that anything had changed so i was like wait a minute he wasn't he just looking at that girl's face like dead on the bed and now he's talking to her wait wait a second what is happening and yeah it just it felt almost like a run-on sentence for the entire book and yeah i feel like he doesn't i don't i don't know he it, it felt like he was rushing through it a little bit instead of like reading it. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, that I, that makes sense to me. It, it all felt kind of smushed together instead yeah. of instead of like kind of I, I felt like it was hard to understand a lot of of what was happening because of how it was read to me in this kind of like rapid fire, like really quick pace. I felt like there were there were no there's there's almost the whole runtime is just speaking. There's no there's no bumper music or anything at any point. Right. So it's kind of hard to absorb a lot of it. Yeah. And I do think because this is a collection of stories, I think it really could have benefited from, you know, chapter one. And Mm -hmm. then we go through the we go through that story and then chapter two. And then that way, there's very distinct cuts in between each story. Or it could have even been, you know, chapter one and then interlude or something like that if you didn't if it was like maybe a really short story and then like a little jazz music plays and the next thing starts sure to set because also there's a lot of these some of them are you know set in like old timey like the 20s some of them are set in modern times some of them are in the future yeah but the only way you know is and that's fine they don't have to establish that right away but something like like you're saying like maybe some music to set like oh okay maybe this takes place during this time yeah um would have gone a long ways because the only way i knew that we changed maybe times frames is when somebody says something about looking at their cell phone yeah whereas in the story before the guy was talking about going to a payphone or something yeah yeah that's true um I mean, little gripes. I do think he did a good job. I do think that the... I think there are some really good individual stories in here. Yes, exactly. And that's what I was going to say. I think we should roll into, like, how we kind of feel about the actual... uh, The book itself. Um, And we should... So the the genre kind of of this book, like we said, is... um, It's a bunch of short stories, and most of them are, like, crime... What are they like? Mystery crime stories? Yeah, for the most part? like like a lot of like noir, like private investigator stuff like that. Yeah, noir is a good a good way to put it. Um, but don't the the cover of the book and that premise are a little deceiving because some of these are just straight up. It's just a short story about like a gruesome murder. Period. Yeah, like that's it. Um, yeah. There's very little mystery. No one's trying to solve it. No, none of that stuff. Yeah, yeah, it is a lot more. Yeah, maybe even crime stories isn't right. It's it's a lot more like I guess it's like violent and passion moments. Sure. And it is like a detective work. Yeah, yeah. Because and okay, I'll just jump in and say that now. So, the Nick Shelby case and other crime stories. Yes, that's accurate. A Nick Shelby case is true. There's one story in this. This is this the second one, right? It's the second story, yeah. But I was expe- I thought maybe I was missing something because then I thought, oh, we jumped into the next story. I was like, oh, okay, so so this is Nick Shelby also, right? Oh, but okay. It's not. It Nick Shelby is the one named character, and he's only in that second story. That's about him. 
Right. And that's it. And I was expecting, because his name's in the title, that he was a bigger part of the book, but he's not. <laughs> so I guess I didn't even really pick up on the the Nick Shelby case and other stories part of the title until now. Right. Well, that's it's just a little gripe I had. I mean, I no, I think I, that's it, I think that is fair because there is there is a little Nick Shelby snippet, which is is good. I actually like that story. Yeah, I guess I just didn't understand unless this is something that Tom plans on building on in the future. Is this Nick Shelby character and maybe building him up as a, you know, a main character in his stories? I didn't really understand why he's a named character on in the, the cover. in the title. Yeah, when he yeah, only gets as much runtime as everybody else in the book technically speaking of runtime how long is this book this book is six hours and 23 minutes yeah so it's i feel like it's it's pretty good like amount of time i feel like that's that's a pretty good space for me for like a bunch of a collection of short stories yeah and actually you get quite a few stories in this so let me see if i can pull it up exactly like what the amount of stories is <clears throat> so looks like you get about one two three four five six they, they run about 20 20 to 40 minutes a story. some of them are long and some of them are short yeah and i mean there's a couple in here that are under 10 minutes you know only seven minutes long mm -hmm. or so um so you get quite a few stories in here which is actually <clears throat> that's a since the book itself is so short, it was kind of nice how many stories you actually get. Yeah, there it yeah, it jumps around a lot. Yes. If you don't and, like one, just keep listening. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So I we've kind of already talked about this, but I, I kind of want to bring it up a little bit more. Do, do you feel like this was like an easy thing to follow? Uh no, I did not actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I and I feel like a lot of that is kind of how it's narrated, I'm if I'm honest. Yeah, I would agree definitely though you can't listen to this i would say if you're focusing on something else no um you will find yourself if you miss a sentence or two yeah you you're gonna be confused for the rest of the story i feel like mm -hmm. so that that's pretty much i mean my feelings on that i overall each individual story like if you listen to it from start to finish is not hard to understand necessarily yeah. this isn't like a lovecraft story where by yeah. the end you're like wait what the fuck happened yeah but what about the cat <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> this is not one of those this these stories are well written and they are easy to understand if you are listening the whole time yeah like. and and maybe familiarizing yourself with the titles of each story before you go through would help too i didn't sure. do that but because I, I re-listened to a couple of them and then like knowing like what the title was and then hearing that and knowing like, okay, the next story is starting helped me a lot. Sure. Yeah. And I, and again, we've already kind of uh, established, you know, that, that uh, how we feel about it, that a lot of these issues that we have brought up are honestly due to narration, unfortunately, but because I really do think that somebody who read the story in a physical book would have a much different experience. I yeah, I think so to too. This, one. this is one of the few times that I think, and I again, I don't think that uh, Keir Hansen did a bad job. I just feel like it was, uh, it was a combination of a few things that if if somebody had stepped up like before they published it and had said, hey man. Uh, maybe we should put some breaks in here or we should do, you know, slow down a little bit or something like that. It could have benefited from that. Yeah, I, I think so, too. As far as I can see, too, Keir Hansen only has four four yeah. books on Audible. So I'm going to go ahead and just go out on a limb and guess he's pretty new at this. So yeah, and he'll probably only get better. Yeah, exactly. I do. I do think that he does a good job narrating, and I just think he has just some voices. Started. I think that have some pretty iconic lines. It just, it all just feels a little rushed to me. I don't know how else to put it. Yeah. Yeah. So, Kier, if you hear this, we honestly, this is nothing but constructive criticism. We don't. Yeah. Think, Please we, come on our show. I'd love to talk to you too. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If you want to come on and talk to us about it, we would love to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. You want to call us a bunch of faggots? Let's go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you think that our opinions are awful, by all means, come on and tell us. 
We'd love to hear it. Okay. So what do you think? What's what's your overall recommendation on this? Let's just get a solid concrete recommendation on this one. What do you think? I think for me personally, this book is not for me. I don't I'm not like a big crime kind of person. Okay. So I, I feel like this is not I'm not I'm not like the target audience of this. There are a couple stories that I really enjoyed here, but I I I didn't like love this book. I thought it was okay. Okay. Uh, that's fair, I think. <clears throat> I I'm in the same boat. Uh this one I I did find quite a few of these stories actually very intriguing. Yeah, I, me too. I liked some of them. You get a nice kind of blend, right? It's it's not just noir uh detective work the whole time mm-hmm. which is kind of what i went into it thinking it was going to be um but the uh the overall like honestly a couple of these are even like borderline sci-fi yeah and i honestly those are my favorite stories yeah there there's some borderline sci-fi ones there's some there's some there's some like straight up horror like sci-fi horror ones yeah there is like alternate history stuff Mm -hmm. yeah which is also good yeah which is also very cool so i did i like that you get a a very good mixed bag of stories versus just a you know la noir you know tips his little hat down and smokes a cigarette yeah story (laughs) (laughs) i i i appreciated that and i i I do think this this has a very target audience, and I think there are some people who are diehard. Oh, yeah. I know. think a lot of people will love this. Yeah, exactly. I think there is a good group of people that will love these kind of stories. And again, like you said earlier, if you don't like the story you're listening to, just wait a few minutes because yeah. the next one might be completely different from the one you heard before. Mm-hmm. So I don't exactly know who I would recommend this to. Again, I it's not exactly all right up my alley, but I was, I really did appreciate a lot of the stories. Yeah. So if that's not an androgynous uh, recommendation, <laughs> I don't know what is. <laughs> um, yeah. So what do you think? Should we, uh, should we pass the spoiler wall? I don't necessarily know that we'll a hundred percent talk about this. I don't know. If Maybe I we could just details. talk about like our favorite one. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So for anybody who's new here, we're going to pass the spoiler wall, which means, we're basically going to spoil the whole story. So if this is something you do think you would like to listen to, please pause the podcast, go listen to this story, and then please come back here and hear what we have to say about it. Yeah. So right off the bat, I just got to say that I think the very first story, I mean, this one Siren? actually, yeah, <clears throat> it kind of like, it was a super solid hook to the book for sure. Uh, yeah, other than me being really confused because I didn't realize it was over, and then I was hearing about some detective Nick Shelby, and I'm like, what is – what? I was going to say the same thing. Like, somebody's in Mexico and they're dead? Like, wait a minute. Is that who the stripper killed? I, I was going to say the same thing because before I realized that this yeah. is just short stories, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, oh, okay, so we're just setting the scene for what Nick Shelby's going through. Yeah, now. exactly. So, yeah, I agree. I was still confused by, like, and then by the time we get to, like, the fourth story, I was like, Does, is this supposed to be connected to the first story? I'm very confused. Uh, uh, I will say I found it kind of funny. The the story called Birth Control, that is, like, exactly what I was talking about the other day on Roundtable. I know. Isn't I know. that weird? I know. It is weird, too, because I remembered that after just sitting down to do this. I, and I remember that birth control story. I liked it when I listened to it. Yeah, and that's I, I guess that's the one that I want to talk about a little bit, so, which is I think is probably my favorite. So, like, in this world, all the men are sterile. They, like, did something to them, I guess, when they were young. So you have to, like, pass tests and stuff to make sh- to so they can make you fertile for, like, a short amount of time and you can try and have kids. Right. But it's basically a story about how this lady wants to have kids, but she doesn't meet the requirements. So she gets like illegal sperm yeah, and gets herself pregnant. She's like too poor, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just some, poor. You can't afford yeah, stuff. Exactly. <laughs> but she she has a baby. They find out about it. They send her to jail. She, they The baby goes to like another family who couldn't conceive on their own. She steals the baby back. It was it's I, I liked that one a lot. Actually, I thought that was like pretty a pretty strong story. 
I, I feel like too. honestly he could have explored that world a little more. Yeah, you could you could write a full length yeah. feature book about that concept, mm-hmm. and it would be good. Um, and the family she steals it from, right? They they are qualified in yeah, every way. Yeah, they're like over qualified. Yeah, they are qualified to have a baby, but they can't like for whatever reason they are mm-hmm. unable to conceive. So yeah, this gal who went to prison, they take her baby away and adopt it out to these people. And then, yeah, she steals the baby back after she gets out of prison. And, and there's also this like other theme of like a a religious kind of like uprising, like our, it's our God given right to have kids and then like fighting back. Sure. And I would love to hear more about that too. Yeah. <clears throat> oh yeah. That's what I mean. This, this could be a full feature length story by itself. For sure. Yeah. Like this could be a six hour book on its own. Uh, it yeah, be, it, it really could. And it would be very engaging, I'm sure. And I also, uh, do you want to talk about one? And, look, and if, if I'm hogging the conversation. No, it's all good. I, I like the siren story. The very first one. Um, yeah. Super I, short. It's super short, but it's also, I think it's, it's like excellently written and not like a single word is wasted. Yeah. Very, very effective. <clears throat> and the idea. So the concept in this one is that this, uh, She's a hooker, right? She's a whore? Yeah, a lady of the night. Okay, sure. Yeah, much more elegant way to put it. Thank you. Yeah. (laughs) She's a whore! (laughs) She, one of her colleagues was... Well, I I got the vibe that they are, like, in a relationship together. Oh, like, the two, those, these two ladies? Yeah. Like, but they're both... They're both ladies of they're the night. They're both ladies. Right? Le, they're both ladies of the night, but they're like in a relationship together. That's, okay. that's the vibe I got. I and don't know could, if that that might not be right. You could be right. Because because she she says she noticed she didn't come home at night. Ah, you're right. Yeah, it's been a minute since I listened to these. I'm not gonna. Well, I li- this is one of the ones I listened to twice. Okay. Because I felt like it wasn't fair the first time. I was like, oh, okay. I didn't know where the lines were. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I have definitely slept since I listened to this last. <laughs> okay. Um, Either so, she, the one gal, right? Like you said, doesn't come home, and so there's also been rumors going around, right, of like a killer, right, serial. Yeah, killer. a real Jack the Ripper situation. Yeah, and so this this gal, our main character, she knows what man he, she knows which man this gal. They call was them with Johns. Last. Yeah, which John she was with last. So her plan is to go with this same John and kill him to get revenge and hopefully Mm -hmm. stop any more, you know, women from being killed by this guy. So she does that. She finds the guy, she goes home with him and she freaking gets naked. And then she fucking bludgeons him to death. Dude, bashes him in the fucking head with a claw hammer. Oh God. (laughs) Yeah. Brutal. And it's so messed up though, because she, she does that she goes home and she's watching tv and they arrest the serial killer right on mm-hmm. tv yeah so then she realizes she completely killed yeah the she wrong just killed man. some dude she just killed some random guy who picked her Which up as a as a I, whore i will say i feel like that the this theme of like killing the wrong person or, or like trying to kill like this, like trying to kill a killer, I feel like comes up a little too often for me. I feel like it comes yeah. up in a couple more stories. Yeah, quite a few of these are. That's kind of what they're centered around. Yeah, yeah. is is a it, there's. It's almost as if um. He felt like because they're kind of mystery stories, like there had to be misdirection in each one. Ooh, yeah. And I don't necessarily think that's true. I think in this first one, it's very effective. Because no, it's so I short, I think it is. It is point. very good in the first one. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> did you listen to the actual, the old wounds, Nick Shelby case, um, yeah. recently, like, I like, mean, a little bit recently. Okay. You want to talk about that one since let's talk about it because it's kind of the title of the book. So I guess it is like the centerpiece. Yeah. Uh, I think it is the longest story too. It's an hour and 15 minutes just on its own. So it is the longest of all the short stories. Yeah, I think the next closest one might be that birth control one. Yeah, about 45 minutes. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what it looks like. And there's a few that are 40 minutes long. Yeah, the the Shelby case 
it starts off with him doing like his normal thing where he he like spies on people essentially he's a private detective so yep so he's 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 looking into some girl for her dad because he wants to make sure she's okay but i'm pretty sure he's just upset she's a lesbian is the vibe i get and then oh man you might have to help me here he gets contacted by his sister-in-law is that what you would call her were they married they were married. I right? can't remember if they got married or not. See, it, I can't either. But either maybe, way, it was maybe his, his girlfriend's sister, yeah. Yeah. Um and she went missing, right? She has gone missing. Well, she went to Mexico and they found her fake passport. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh no, they found her dead, right? Her her body? They found allegedly they found her body, but it's the wrong passport. Yeah. Or something like that. So then Nick decides, right, that he is going to go investigate this story because, you know, obviously he wants to know what happened to her, why this happened. And he's right because she just catch. disappeared like three, three months or three weeks ago from his life. Like they were dating and then he came home one day and she was just gone. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> And then he ends up going down there, right? And he follows some leads. Like he's a he's a pretty good freaking um, private detective. But I think there's a few things that I'm just like, okay. It, uh, he has like plot armor. Oh, um, for sure. Like when <clears throat> he gets caught, I think it's by the police. They come the into the one, th Yeah, they come into that one bar, and the bartender just like tells him to slip out through the back. Yeah. Even though he doesn't know the bartender at all. It's like, wait, why would that bartender help him? He don't know that guy. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he's the killer. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> um. And then it, it gets weird, right? Because his girlfriend turns back up, like even though she's supposed she, to be dead. Yeah, she shows up at his house. Yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, she shows up at his house. And I don't remember if she tells the story or if it comes up later that she was like in love with this guy for a long time and then he was killed but he faked his own death because he had like debts but he came back into her life and was like move to Mexico with me and it'll be it'll be great and so she bailed on on Nick to go with him yeah. right does that sound right yes yes that sounds right and so then <clears throat> she that body they found right is oh god damn it how how was it it was the dude no it was someone who went to collect the debts of that other guy right yeah. and then they set the building on fire and burned the building down with him in or with her in there mm -hmm. and they just assumed that it was nick's like girlfriend yeah um and then but nick figures out who it really was and there's a lot of, like, I felt like somebody fakes their death, like, three times in this. It, it like, was pretty often. There's a <laughs> where I'm like, how many times can you get away with that? I think none. And Nick almost dies. Like, he almost gets freaking killed. Um, He, got, he gets shot, right? Uh, yeah, because the guy comes back, right, for her. Yeah. I can't remember his name. Yeah, so that's, oh, that's what bothered me, is this dude was, like, dead came back into her life, had her run away to Mexico. Then she thinks he's like dead again or something like well, that. Yeah. Because he faked his death again. <laughs> yeah. And then, but then he's like, he's like, ha, it was a double cross. Yeah. Was, still... yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, he, and then he comes back and he's like, got a gun on Nick. And then this, this chick like wants to go with that dude again. I, I know like, I don't I didn't understand that at all honestly. Yeah. I I kind of started feeling bad for Nick cuz I was like Me too. I was like why would you date such a psycho? Yeah. If you're like a, such a good detective like wouldn't you know she's a bad character? Yeah. Don't follow this lady around. Don't. Yeah. It can't be worth it. <laughs> Come on Nick, you're better than that. And then uh they end up leaving like he shoots Nick and this this again was one of the parts I remember that the narration really kind of killed it for me. So he like shoots Nick Nick goes down, blacks out, and so you're like, oh, man, that can't be good. 
But because of the way the story is being told, it's like Nick goes, you know, Nick falls hard to the ground. His his vision's blurring and then blackness. And then Nick wake up, wakes up. And I was like, "Well, wait, what?" Like it was yeah. <laughs> there's no there's like zero tension because there was no pause, no nothing between when Nick goes down and to when he wakes up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um then Nick makes a phone call to like some some homies of his and tells them that hey that dude who owes you money is he's he's on his way that's what it was because nick first talked to those guys who that, oh that's that right he, he worked money. for yeah and they're like there's no way nick we yeah, know he's like, dead he, we know he's dead and he's like yeah. you sure dude <laughs> yeah and it's very classic like mob boss with two like uh bruiser yeah bodyguard guys <laughs> very classic <laughs> i got brass and knuckles <laughs> nice Dude, that's awesome. I love it. <laughs> Nobody steal it. Yeah. <laughs> or do, and let us know what you use. Yeah, it. yeah. If you use it for something cool, then that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Copyright on that, bitch. Um, yeah. <laughs> Drawn to the paperwork now. <laughs> um, yeah, and then those guys end up, like, Nick tells them, hey, I found the dude who's got your money. Uh, and they end up, like, cutting him off. And I can, honestly, I can't remember how it ends. I don't remember either. Maybe they kill him. I feel Maybe? like they kill him. Or yeah. is he dead for real this time? I don't know. I can't even remember now if Nick gets back with that crazy lady. No, he 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 doesn't get back with her. Oh, okay, she good. wants to, and he's like, nah, nah, babe. I got yeah, things. Pulls his little, <laughs> pulls his fedora down, and yeah, yeah. It, it, for cigarette. some reason, it's raining a bunch, and he's wearing a duster. Yeah, he and it, yeah, with a real high collar. Yeah, yeah. exactly. He, like pulls it up. Yeah, but he just walks <laughs> into the rain, and you can't see him anymore. <laughs> Oh, so badass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that and that story is kind of the again, that's the like title story of yeah. them. So, and again, it's the longest one of, out of all of them. And it's on a, it's a good story. I just felt like there were almost like like that. It was a double cross like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that. The guy like faked his death and then yeah, he like is back and then he fakes his death again and then he comes back again or something. I was like, "Whoa, this is this is crazy roller coaster. The one story I thought was really fucked up was the one where the guy's wife has to become a whore so they can actually like afford stuff. Yeah. Is that the Jack the Ripper the one? Yeah, I think yeah. it's a seed of misfortune. I think. I see. I can't. Honestly, I'm having a hard time remembering which story goes with which title. Just because... Yeah, I mean that that one's super simple. It's just like a guy, his wife becomes a pro, a lady of the night because <laughs> they can't afford to like pay their bills anymore, and no one wants to hire him because he's not a very good worker. And he comes home one day and murders the guy she's with, and she they they dump him in the river, and the guy she was with happened to be Jack the Ripper. Yeah, and he her husband kills him. Yeah. Without knowing that's who they're the police are looking for. And mm-hmm. then he's all bummed out because he missed out on the reward money. Yeah. Instead, you know, he kills him and then he has to dump his body. I like that he has to shove him in a trunk and the cop helps him pull the Yeah, the carry cop the helps trunk. him carry the trunk because his wife's being a total bitch. Yeah. Yeah, she's like actually she's gonna turn him in. I know, like, oh my god. I feel like she wanted to be a whore. <laughs> When when you say that, and when we were looking for a, a different way to say it, I just think of the beer fest thing. Hmm. Yeah. What's what? the American word I'm yeah, looking what for? Is, what is American word? Yeah. Oh. oh, I think there's a bit of a translation issue here. Yeah. He's like prostitute, slut for money. Yeah, I like that. The prostitute, the way he says that is so funny. <laughs> prostitute, slut for money. That's yeah. There must be a little bit of a translation here. Gam Gam's great. <laughs> Gam Gam a whore. Um, I like that one. The other story I liked was the dude in, like, he's, like, the ranger in, I can't even remember now. Oh, like, Iraq or whatever? No, wasn't he in, like, Norway or something like that, where he's out in the woods? I'm going to be honest, that's not ringing a single bell. The girl comes to his house, and then those three dudes come looking for her. Oh, and he kills them all? He, yeah, well, at first he, like, drives them off, and then they come back. And yeah, he like sets up his house like he oh, has her go hide with some other uh-huh. guy. And then he he sets it up so he's like laying out in the brush and those guys show up and just start lighting up his house with guns. 
and he ends up killing a couple of them. And then he goes up to the one guy, and they're like, no, you don't understand. We need to get her back. She's not human. I was like, oh, shit, what? <laughs> and then that's, like, where it ends. Like, you don't yeah. actually find out what she is or anything. That's one of the last ones, isn't it? Yeah, it is. The Gamekeeper? Yep, that's yep, that's probably it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's, yeah, we have to get her back. She's not human. Yeah. Yeah, and then he's like, what does that mean? Yeah, exactly, yeah. And then he ends up, I'm pretty sure he does, he, the dude dies or whatever, and then he's kind of like, oh, shit, and I've been defending her this whole time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I did like that one, too. I thought that one was pretty uh, effective for such a short story. Mm, I'm trying to remember. I liked the the perfect story. It's the one, like, about the guy who works for the paper, and he's, like, trying to get an interview with that billionaire who's like became a recluse and he like breaks in and he finds out that they they've been keeping him on ice this whole time and they killed oh, him a long time ago yeah i forgot about that one i like that <laughs> yeah. one and they actually make it look like he killed him right they like frame it up like that yeah and then i like though the twist ending how then he does get his story yeah but he doesn't write it it's about it's about him, him yeah. yeah i did actually like that too <laughs> no, i thought that was i thought that one's really good yeah that one was super effective um i i am trying to think of those other ones that i want to talk about i think i might be good yeah i think so too um and honestly i would like to talk about them more but we with just scheduling problems i listened to this probably like four months ago or three months ago and just haven't yeah. been able to talk about it yet so um it's been a few minutes since i listened to it last um overall though i was pleased i mean because i'm i honestly was kind of like okay you know this guy's reaching out to us uh he's giving us this book for free this could go one of two ways it could be really good or it could be really bad um and I was pleasantly pleased though with the uh with the stories we got. So Yeah, and I guess look out for that Tom Bat episode if he wants to come on too. That'll be really fun. Yeah, I will yeah. Hopefully he'll listen to this and yeah, we definitely yeah. Uh, I'll reach out to him again and let him know. I I just I had told him when he reached out to us that I would we would listen to the story first and then we would get back with him about possibly having him on the show. So, yeah. Yeah, keep an eye out for that too. Uh, <clears throat> so what do you think? Do we do we know what we're doing next time? Yeah, I I, I think so, right? It, we have the next book planned, correct? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So we'll be we'll be looking at Dark Harvest by Will Jordan, aka the Critical Drinker, right? Yep, that is correct. Yeah, so that should be the next book episode that comes out. Um, again, you know. <clears throat> keep an eye out we might have some random episodes in between there you know round tables or anime squires stuff like that we haven't forgot about anime squires again just scheduling stuff and bo's had some hardware issues uh, yeah you know typical um podcaster excuses i'm sure um <laughs> but here we are with those same issues so but yeah with that i think uh you know thank you everybody for listening we greatly appreciate it. <clears throat> if you happen to get like a random friend request from, you know. Oh, Kate, yeah. That's like probably a good thing to mention. Yeah, because basically, you know, Facebook has these recommendations. So like if apparently if you know one other person, it'll recommend them as a friend to you. And I'm not going to lie. I've just been going through that list. And if we have 10 or more friends in common, I've just been sending out friend requests. So the goal of that is just to kind of spread the word of the podcast right so and then when i when these episodes go live i usually just do a facebook post that way you know everybody sees where it's at and then you can go and choose to listen to it however you do you know this stuff mm -hmm. goes up on youtube or and it goes to pretty much any platform you can listen to podcasts on <clears throat> except amazon music and really yeah. Remember, we didn't sign up for that because there's literally... Oh, that's right. I yeah, forgot. There is a clause in there, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I read through their terms and conditions, and part of it is that they can pretty much censor your podcast if they want to. So yeah. you, know, you are agreeing to let them censor your podcast, and... 
we just didn't want to agree to that. Not at this round table. Exactly. <clears throat> I'd like to think we got a little more integrity than that. <laughs> we got a crest. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. If you got a sponsor and you want us to read it out, by all means, contact us. But at this point, we're not not worried about that stuff, you know? Yeah. I mean, if you want to, whatever, but. Do it for the lulls. No. Sure. <laughs> But yeah, so thank you guys for listening. And again, if you want to reach out to us for any reason, the easiest way is just to email us, kotpl.pod at gmail.com. And I will do my best to get back to you. Or we'll talk about it on the show. Yeah. Um, we should, uh, at some point, maybe we'll talk about these awesome spam emails we've got. We've got some good ones. <laughs> yeah, we could. We call it the treasure trove. <laughs> but yeah, so with that, we will catch you guys in the next one.